Hi guys, welcome to another video. Now, as you will have seen from some of my recent videos, I've become quite taken with the Micro Four Thirds system. Now, I've been using the little Panasonic G100, which was ultimately labelled as a vlogging camera, but it's actually turned out to be a really good photography camera, and I've been really pleased with the results I'm getting. However, the actual usability of the camera does leave something to be desired. The lack of weather sealing is an issue, the lack of IBIS is not ideal, and then just the general construction, it makes it a bit fiddly for, actually for photography. But as I say, it does produce wonderful results. So what I've actually done is I've picked up another Micro Four Thirds camera body, and today I'm taking it out for his first proper landscape photography shoot. I have taken it on a family walk where I took a handful of photos, but nothing serious, so today is going to be the first real test of this system. And I'm going to take you guys along for the ride, and uh, let's see if it ticks the boxes of what I need a Micro Four Thirds camera to do. Now I've come for a walk over Rothbury Terraces today, so we're starting off this nice patch of woodland, and I'd like to say that my bag feels really light. And yes, it does feel a little bit lighter than it does carrying a full frame system, but probably not as much as you would expect. Because the reality is the camera body I'm using basically weighs exactly the same as my Panasonic S5 Mark II. Give or take a few grams here or there, but you know, nothing drastic. And size-wise, very similar, very, very similar. So you have to ask yourself the question of why bother with a Micro Four Thirds camera if you have no size advantage in the camera body or weight advantage. But of course there is more to a camera system than just the camera body and you do have to consider the size of the lenses. Now the lens I've actually purchased is the Olympus 12-45 f4 Pro and you see that's a 24-90mm full frame equivalent and it's crazy small. Now the lens I've been using with Panasonic S5 Mark II is the 24-105 to and honestly it just basically makes this thing look comical. It's just absolutely huge, it just it's totally dwarfs it you know. And the weight, now I've, I've got a package which is still under a kilogram, which is what I'm really always aiming at. I've stuck with a Panasonic Lumix body uh, simply because I like Lumix colours, I like the Lumix menu system, I, I, I just think they're generally nice, well made cameras. I did consider switching to an Olympus, but I've used Olympus in the past, beautiful cameras, I like them too, but I feel like the usability for me made me lean towards the Lumix bodies. Anyway, I'm just going to take this shot. I've actually composed in a square crop. Three seconds self timer, base ISO 200. And I'll put the shot up now. Now, keeping on the subject of lenses, look at the size of this Panasonic 35 to 100 mil lens. Now, this is the equivalent of a 70 to 200 mil full frame lens. And I can fit it literally in my hand like that, on my palm. This is game changing, there's no weight to it. I quite often won't take a 70 to 200 mm lens simply because I don't use them very often. It's not something that I generally use, but it's nice to have in your bag just in case. So the fact that I can have a lens this small and literally just throw it in my bag and almost forget about it, but have it there just in case, that actually is a game changer. And that makes my, you know, my landscape photography kit a lot, lot smaller, even if the camera body is still the same size as my Panasonic S5 Mark II. So one thing that is important for me about this camera that I've bought is that I want it to have a pretty good video on it. And again, that's probably another reason for sort of edging towards the Lumix side. And actually the camera I've picked up is, strictly speaking, designed for video. It's a video first camera, photo second. Which means, unfortunately, it's not the new G9 Mark II. It's not even the original G9. But it's one of the GH series. And it's not even the latest GH model. It's not the GH6. But in fact, what I've picked up is the GH5 Mark II. The price was right. There were some really good deals on Amazon to buy it new. So, okay, in modern technology terms, it's quite an old camera. But, you know, anybody would think that camera manufacturers are in the business of selling us cameras. Because the reality is, it might be slightly old technology, but it ticks all the boxes for what I need it to do. It's got great IBIS, it's got good video, um, and in fact the video is virtually the same as my S5 Mark I original, so I think that's great. 
I'm not necessarily talking pixel people and image quality, I just mean the actual real life use. And it's built like an absolute tank. And really for me, if I'm going to take up the hills and do this sort of thing, I need it to be built like a tank. And, you know, and that's the reason why I'm really keen to get into a Micro Four Thirds system. That's to do more of this sort of stuff. Exploring, getting up the hills, keeping my bag as light as possible. After all, this is the whole reason why I became a photographer. Now, of course, I can feel that some of you are probably at this point shouting at your computer saying, Jason, you need to shoot full frame for landscapes. Micro Four Thirds is just basically too small. The quality's not good enough. Well, I think you're wrong, to be honest. I do agree that full frame has a slight edge, but I think there are a lot of advantages to using Micro Four Thirds. You know, obviously, as I've mentioned, smaller lenses, smaller lenses less weight means I can walk further you know I'm walking pretty much off track at the moment and this would be a nightmare if my bag was too heavy the advantage of this smaller sensor means that basically I have an increased depth of field with my lenses so that means I don't have to shoot such a high f number to get front to back sharpness with my shot and I do agree that if I want to if I want to sort of throw the, the background out of focus, selective blur as such, selective lens blur, well, yeah, that, that is trickier, but I'm shooting landscapes and the reality is I'm probably, it's very rare that's going to be something I'm concerned about. And of course there is high ISO, I can't deny that, definitely. Oh, excuse me, I'll just jump out of that. I can't deny that the high ISO performance of Micro Four Thirds is absolutely nowhere near as good as full frame. However, I tend to shoot at base ISO. Really, it's, it's pretty much a moot point to me. And if I'm shooting handheld, okay, perhaps, perhaps I would need to increase the ISO. But the smaller sensor generally means better ibis and if I've got better ibis then I can still keep the ISO lower okay I know what you're going to say if your subject's moving ibis isn't a fat lot of good but I'm shooting landscapes and that's the whole point isn't it I am shooting landscapes and I think for micro four thirds for shooting landscapes is in some ways the ideal compromise so anyway I'm going to swing you around so you can see what I'm walking towards. There's a nice bit of autumn colour going on here, so I'm going to spend a few minutes to try and find a nice viewpoint and set my tripod up and then have a chat with you about the composition. Right, so I've just set one up. It's a bit precarious my uh, spot, but you get the idea. If you look over there, basically what I'm trying to do is this little group of trees here. I'm effectively using the 35 to 100, so 100 to 200 mil equivalent. I'm, I'm trying to isolate a little, a little patch of it, cut out the sky, make it almost abstract. I'm shooting at 200 for a second, F8, ISO 200. Three second self timer. And I'll put the shot up now. Okay, I've just set up another one. Basically, I've come the other side of the track. There's some nice rocks here. There's the tree, which you can now see basically from the on-screen video, which just gives you a rough idea of what I'm actually doing. Look at this group of trees behind me. They're just crying out to be photographed. Now, please accept my apologies for filming absolutely everything on the GoPro today. I know it's probably a bit shaky. But there was reasoning behind it, and that was I didn't want to bring any full frame cameras with me at all. I wanted no temptation, I wanted it to be a full micro four thirds test as such. Okay, I'm going F8, 200 for a second.
It's amazing just how similar the whole interface of this camera is to the full frame F5 and the S5 Mark II. And it's really, for me, it's made the learning curve, well, pretty much non-existent, if I'm being honest. I sort of really wish I could get a bit of angle on it and try and get it polarised. What I might actually do is I might skirt round a little bit, try and shoot 90 degrees to the sun and get a polarised on. Because if I could manage to polarise the sky, I think this could actually be quite a nice shot. At the moment, I'll put on where we are at the moment. It's, it's pleasant. It'll probably make quite a nice mono, actually. But it's not the shot I want yet. Right, so I have moved slightly round and I'm going to fit the polarising filter. Now, here is the downside of micro four thirds. Because you've got a smaller centre, your lenses are effectively, effectively wider. So this means to achieve 24mm, I'm actually using a 12mm lens. No, it's still a 12mm lens. But what this means, as some of you will probably know, the wider the lens, when using a polarising filter, the more likely you are to get sort of nasty thing netting and sort of going to look a bit... Well, basically uneven polarisation, which looks pretty terrible. And I think that's what's happening here. And this is a disadvantage of Micro Four Thirds, and I've often considered this. But, you know, I suppose there's trade-offs with every system. And for me, the increased depth of field sort of is a good, good trade-off. But, obviously, I've got an equivalent of a 24mm lens here. Now, what if I want to get wider? And, you know, that's going to start getting awkward, because the reality is, then I'm sort of getting sort of a really wide lens to just to achieve something being a bit wider. And I suppose, for full transparency, what I do have available to me is the Sony a7C, which is my video camera, which I haven't bought today, and I'm regretting that choice. Uh, but that camera I do have an 18mm lens for, so I, I think going forward, if I do decide to go with Micro Four Thirds for the majority of my landscape stuff, I think what I will probably do is obviously I'll be filming with the A7C anyway, and I'll just keep the A7C and I'll keep the 18mm on, so if I do need auto wide, I will just have to resort to using the Sony A7C and 18mm. And I suppose then I sort of get the best of both worlds. Anyway, just waiting for the light. And as soon as it happens, I'll put the shot up. As you can see, I also have another Micro Four Thirds camera with me. Which of course is my drone. Now, if I was carrying my full frame gear with me, I just physically wouldn't have the space to get this in my bag as well and be able to walk any distance with any sort of comfort. So for me, if I can use a smaller camera system, i.e. smaller lenses, even though the body is the same, we've ascertained that, but if the lenses are smaller, that leaves me a lot more space in my bag, which means I can actually put this little beauty in and also get some aerial shots, all keeping the same Micro Four Thirds 20 megapixel sensor. But of course, the biggest problem with this whole idea is the fact that if I'm going to the effort to get to locations and I'm going to the effort to walk there carrying heavy bags, what I don't want to do is I don't want to compromise an image quality because at the end of the day, if the photos aren't good enough, then really I don't feel like 
and doing the best job I could do. At the moment, I'm very confident that the camera that I was recording me at the moment, coupled with this, excuse the army, for aerial photos, is sort of giving me that ideal combination. I've got 24 mil to 200 mil covered in a small, basically section of my bag, which is roughly there. And then I've got 20 megapixels aerial shots, which can fit in there. Now, the location I've come to today is Rothby Terraces in Northumberland. It's close to the Northumberland National Park. It's also quite close to army grounds, hence why you're hearing the planes flying over. Now, I've been coming here pretty much since I, just after I started photography, ever since I moved to the Northeast at least anyway, so that's since 2001. And if you'd have said to me back in 2001, when I'm carrying a big medium format camera around with a couple of lenses and it's like weighing an absolute ton. If you'd have said to me that 20 odd years later I'm going to return with a camera that weighs probably half the weight of what my old medium format system used to weigh, covering from 24 mil to 200 mil, plus I could have an effectively an aerial camera, i.e. a drone, all fitted in a bag this size, I would have never Hi guys, I'm just going to jump straight in at this point because I've just had some of the most gorgeous light on the walk back to the car. I didn't have time to set up cameras or anything to vlog it, so yeah, I'm just going to put some of my favourite shots up now. The light was gorgeous, and if this hasn't been a good test for the GH5 Mark II, then I don't know what has. I'll put the shots up now, and I'll see you, drop you right back into the video. I am going to persevere with seeing if I can make this work, because if I can make this work, I think ultimately... I will be happier with having more options to take the things I want to photograph and not have so many limitations. So I'm willing to take a little bit of a drop in image quality to have more flexibility and to get different sort of shots because I think that's ultimately what matters more. So guys, all I would say is watch this space. This is not going to be an overnight decision. I am not sure yet if Micro Four Thirds is going to work for me for landscape photography, but I do know I'm going to give it a good old try and the next few videos I'm going to be sort of concentrating on that. So yeah, if you want to see more about that, subscribe to the channel and um, yeah, if you've liked this one, give it a thumbs up. As I say, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you again next week when I'll be taking out the little GH5 Mark II and seeing how it performs for landscape photography. Thanks for watching.